psychologically speaking, what are the hardest things about your career? About fishing, whether it's tuna fishing or any commercial or fishing. Or any, yeah. I mean, Mentally. I mean, I remember, right, when I was starting out, when I was young, and we're going into the commercial fishing industry now, we're talking, not this fishing with idiot sticks and rods and reels and all that, right? This is when we're hauling nets. Mm-hmm. You know, we were gill netting out of Gloucester. And you're hauling, you know, what you wind up doing. And this, I went from that industry that you started in, so taking passengers out for hires. And then, you know, after high school, I kind of graduated towards the commercial end of the industry. And I remember the first few times, you know, I was on my feet for 42, 48, 72 hours, you know, just working around the clock, hauling nets and doing what it yeah. took to get the job done, right? Yeah. Um, and I remember, you know, questioning myself, like, what did I get myself into? I don't think I can do this, right? And because, you know, those first, I'll, I'll, it just, it was distinct. I remember, I remember it like it was yesterday. Those first times in the industry when you're exposed to working like that. Yeah. You know, you reach, I mean, we're talking, you're hauling nets and you're working nets till your arms, you feel like your arms can't move anymore. But you can't stop because the nets are still coming. The fish is still coming. You're working with other people. They ain't mm-hmm. stopping working, right? So it just... And, like, I remember those first few years, so many times being challenged to the point where, like, I just didn't think I could go on. Hmm. I just Most of us never learned how to train our brains, which is why most of us needlessly settle, struggle, and worse, suffer. My name is Chris Doris, and I want to make brain training mainstream. This is my series, Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. I'm interviewing badasses from all walks of life on what mental toughness means to them and their unique approaches to strengthening their minds. Hey folks, welcome back to Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. I am your host, Chris Doris, and today I am extremely excited to share with you the fact that we have one of my favorite people who I've never met from one of my very favorite television shows. We have Captain Dave Marciano of the wildly successful National Geographic show Wicked Tuna. He is the captain, formerly the captain of uh, fishing vessel Hard Merch or Hard Merchandise, and now currently the captain of fishing vessel Falcon. He is hysterical. If you've never seen the show, uh, I, I promise you, you are in for a treat. Now, I, now I can say that I've never spoken to him live before today, and. Um, I know full, fully well in advance that he, he's, this is going to be fun <laughs> because he's a fun dude. <laughs> and I hope, I hope that we can – I want to be sensitive to it, but I don't think I need to be with him. He's got pretty thick skin. Uh, I hope that we get at some point into um, – if we could just poke fun. He, he has a little tantrum. He's got a, a little temper thing. He throws some tantrums here. He may has a tendency to maybe smash a thing or throw things, and, you know, a little – snap a little bit so i want to talk about the mental toughness of that or lack thereof <laughs> but anyway uh sit back enjoy the ride this is gonna be a fun one let's go he he's here waiting somewhere let's go find him where are you captain and there he is found him captain dave marciano what's up man what's up what's going on how are you well i'm doing amazing and i just want to say thank you for making time i know you're insanely busy you got a lot going on and a lot of cool stuff that we're going to talk some about today but I know we've been working on uh, getting this scheduled for quite a bit, had some tech challenges. I think we both exercised a little bit of mental toughness just to get this damn thing uh, started. So I appreciate your patience uh, and your yeah. persistence. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> so we connected a while ago. I've been a fan of the show for a long time. Awesome. We have a few. We have a few hey, good, because this, this, this laptop was about to wind up like one of my deck brushes. <laughs> My maintenance. <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> and I just bought the freaking thing. <laughs> That's why I was saying, please don't smash anything yet. Please don't smash anything yet. It's still yeah. under warranty, right? <laughs> I dropped it. It was like this when I took it out of the box. Yeah. I just... Right. right. I, me? Well, I never smash things. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we have a couple things in common. We both started working on fishing boats at an early age. That was actually my first job. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, I was a bait boy on a fishing uh, on a, a boat called Captain Chum down in Sea Isle City, New Jersey. Captain Chum. It's a cool name. Really? Yeah, yeah. No, that's look. That's how I started out scrubbing bait cups on the back of the potty boats. Yep. 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 Same deal. So um, we connected uh, on Instagram a while ago. You're in, everybody who's watching or listening, you got to connect with Captain Dave on Instagram. It's, he's freaking hilarious. You have a good time on there, and I have a good time yeah, watching Yeah, I try, to, I try to, in between getting scolded by the network. <laughs> so you know something I, I don't know the answer to that, that I've been curious about is how did, you, how did you actually even get on the show? All right. Um, well... The executive producers, I heard, did some work in that movie, Perfect Storm, right? Mm -hmm. So they were familiar, they became familiar with, with Gloucester as being a very scenic location. It is very beautiful. That's mm -hmm. how those guys look at stuff. Um, now, when I say they, it's Pilgrim Productions. They, mm -hmm. If you Google Pilgrim Studios, all they do is produce reality shows. Mm -hmm. They produce Dirtiest Jobs. Uh, mm. all the Bachelor Bachelorette series, a whole bunch of other ones, right? Yeah. So they heard about us catching these fish that were worth money. So boom, the idea for the show was born. Yeah. Now when they um when they came into town, they were in town for about ten days. They were interviewing a bunch of other boats and captains, mostly mostly, you know, those boats over the Cape Ann Marina too, where Dave and the dot com ties up, you know, over the beautiful people, over the nice end of town, right? <laughs> and uh, on the ninth day, they contacted me. They gave me the rundown. Hey, we got an idea for a show, blah, blah, blah. And they said, one thing we noticed is on your other, on these other boats, your name came up a lot. They said, in our business, if people talk about you, you may be somebody we want to interview to be huh. a part of this project. Huh. And um, the first words out of my mouth was, is there a check-in ball? I'm a commercial <laughs> fisherman, mind you, right? Mm -hmm. and they said, yeah, yeah, you'll get paid to, to participate. And I said, okay, uh, I'll give it a go. Um, hmm. You know, and, and again, I make no claims and never dared to be the biggest or the baddest in the industry, but I've been playing this game for 30 years. I've owned my own boat for quite a long time, right? So I've had some really spectacular seasons as a fisherman, whether it be tuna or anything else. And I've had some really disastrous years as a fisherman. Mm. That's the fishing game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right on. So they pick you. You those I birds? Those are my wife birds. I'm going to strangle them, I think. I can't hear. <laughs> right, stra I'm going to strangle a bird. <laughs> I hate them damn things. They're always over there squeaking while I'm trying to watch TV, too. <laughs> sure, That's why I didn't want to do it in this room. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we get to see. Is that a swordfish behind you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a swordfish, actually. Yeah, looking good. So, on a scale of one to ten, before we're going to start talking about mental toughness in a minute, we'll get to that. All right, all right. But uh, on a scale of one to ten, how big of a Star Wars geek are you? Oh, at least like a probably a, a seven or an eight. That's it. That's a little surprise well, because well, it, look, I'd say ten, but then you know, if I say ten, then there, everybody's then gonna people are going to start right, asking right, those right, trivia right, questions right, right. Good, that are really, good, really good questions. Well right? played, well played. You well, know what I mean? I do know exactly what you mean. And I didn't, the, the reason I'm asking you that question is because I didn't even understand what I'm about to ask you until very recently. Okay. okay so your first boat was, well, the first boat that, yeah. on the show, Hard Merch. Hard, yeah. Hard, hard merchandise. merchandise. Okay. Now, I was always curious about that title. I didn't, I thought it was a cool, cool name. Yeah. But yeah. I didn't know the history. So you got to admit, yeah. for TV world, the name was pretty cool. And but it had, does have dual meanings. Yeah. Okay, right. And then you got the, now you gave that boat to your son. Yep. Okay, so so uh, Joe's running that, and now you're on a new one. All right, which is called the Falcon. Yep. Right. Short for. Far. Millennial, Millennial Falcon. Falcon. And I didn't until I googled hard merchandise. I didn't know that Boba Fett's ship. Spaceship was called Hard Merchandise. No, actually not. His Boba Fett ship was Slave One. Oh, well, then what? what then what's Hard Merch? Oh, see, now that's it. Oh, I, I still don't know. Okay, all right. See, now Hard Merchandise kind of has a dual meaning, right? Mm. All right. Now, this is go back way before TV, um, any of the TV deal. Oh, every morning as a fisherman, we bring out, we go out in the morning, two in the morning, three in the morning, we bring our catch in at the end of the day to the auction, the Gloucester Seafood Display Auction, 
Mm -hmm. And, you know, the next morning, all the buyers would come down at 4 or 5 a.m. and bid on our fish. Mm -hmm. Now, all those, so you were competing with, you know, 50 other boats with all the buyers. Now, the buyers would come down and look for the hard, firm, cold, cold fish, right? That was the fish that was worth the best money because mm -hmm. it was best taken care of. Ah. So, right, I kind of named gotcha. it that, kind of a play on words. Right is you know we got the hard merchandise we got the good stuff right right we used to be quite proud we used to dominate the board when it came to those morning auction prices because we went the extra distance we took care of our fish yeah you know if we didn't have a lot of fish we might have had the highest quality fish and got the paid the most money for the fish that we did have mm. and we're talking many other species not tuna right right yeah so there was that and then. Now, for those of you who do watch Star Wars, you know, there's the books out there. The books, you know, there's hundreds, literally probably about 100 books now. And I've read all or most of them. There may be a few I missed, right? But all the books fill in all the gaps for the movies, right? Now, yeah. there's a three series books on the bounty hunters. Yes. Okay. Yes. And the, in the third book in that series, I'm terrible with authors. Well, we'll figure it out. I'll never remember his name. I'm sorry <clears throat> for the author, but because he was he was a great author, the guy who did these three books. Hmm. Um, and, and the, the third book in the series about the bounty hunter, the bounty hunter trilogy, was the third book in the title, the, the title of the third book in the series was Hard Merchandise. Right? So Jerry, who wrote the series? What was it called? The, the, the Bounty Hunter Trilogies for Star Wars. The Bounty Hunter Trilogy for Star Wars. <clears throat> Timothy Zahn. Is that... Jeremy Bullock? Maybe that's it. I don't know. There's a bunch of different author, authors that write all those other Star Wars books that fill in the gap. Now, I don't want to mislead anybody out there, right? Those are about the only fucking books I've read. <laughs> Jeter. Dude's Jeter, name. Derek Jeter. Jeter. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so that you, sounds familiar. You, those are the only books you've ever read? <laughs> well, it's a Star Wars book. Look, <laughs> look, the first book I ever read when I was a kid was uh, Moby Dick. Ah, I have a copy sitting you know, right when here. I was very young. But yeah. it's not like, look, I, I read books because we do have some downtime on the boat, whether you're taking watch, and oftentimes we don't have TV, right? So yeah. you wind up reading. I would rather sit on my couch and watch TV. I won't lie to you. <laughs> but we don't have cable out there, okay? So, you know, so you gotta, the downside... So you got to be smart. Right. We got to do something so smart. We, so we have to read books. And, uh, but that's like the one... That's my genres, Star Wars, and other sci-fi fantasy books yeah. I've read. But none of them hold my attention like Star Wars, you know? Yeah, I mean, cool. I, I pick up a lot of books, or I buy a book because it looks good on the cover... <laughs> And uh, I read about a third of it, and it winds up, you know, collecting dust somewhere for 25 right. years till I throw it out. So let's talk some mental toughness, shall we? All right. All right. After all, that's what this whole damn Tough Talk series is about. All right. All right. All right. All right. So what, psychologically speaking, what are the hardest things about your career, about fishing, whether it's tuna fishing or any commercial or fishing? Any, yeah. I mean... Mentally. I mean, I remember, right, when I was starting out, when I was young, and we're going into the commercial fishing industry now, we're talking, not this fishing with idiot sticks and rods and reels and all that, right? This is when we're hauling nets, mm -hmm. you know, we're gill netting out of Gloucester, and you're hauling, you know, what you wind up doing, and this, I went from that industry that you started in, so taking passengers out for hires, and then... You know, after high school, I kind of graduated towards the commercial end of the industry. And I remember the first few times, you know, I was on my feet for 42, 48, 72 hours, you know, just working around the clock, all in nets and doing what it yep. took to get the job done, right? Yeah. Um, and I remember, you know, questioning myself, like, what did I get myself into? I don't think I can do this, right? And... Because, you know, those first, I'll, I'll, it just, it was distinct. I remember, I remember it like it was yesterday. Those 
first times in the industry when you're exposed to working like that. Yeah. You know, you reach, I mean, we're talking, you're hauling nets and you're working nets till your arms, you feel like your arms can't move anymore. But you can't stop because the nets are still coming, the fish is still coming. You're working with other people, they ain't mm-hmm. stopping working, right? So it just, and like, I remember those first few years, so many times being challenged to the point where, like, I just didn't think I could go on. Hmm. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't lift my arms for one more minute. Were I you, were you out for one were you, more hour? Were you, were you coming back at night or were you out? No, we're out fishing around the clock. Yeah. Like a lot of, a lot of, you know, fishing, it's different than what you see in the show. You know, if we're out fishing and we're setting gear or hauling nets, yeah, sure, you might ride out to the fishing grounds and you might set gear. And while you're out there, you work till the job's done. You work till the boat's full and yeah. you can make a paycheck and go home. Right. Right. So it literally becomes a deal of working around the clock till the job's done. Even a three day trip. And sometimes we do trip as many as 10 or 15 days on yeah. the bigger boats that weren't mine. Right. Right. But even you do three, four days on a boat in your mind, <laughs> you go out and go fishing and it's been one long day. Mm-hmm. It's only the rest of the world where three or four days have gone by. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. I know this because I, I had a short stint on a scallop boat out of yeah. Cape May. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so I, I, I'm relating. I'm having some flashbacks right now. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is the two hardest things I've ever done in my life yeah. was hike the Grand Canyon as yeah. a smoker out of shape <laughs> and the scalloping boat. What they don't have a golf cart trail for people like me? I wish. No, you know what they got for you? They got, my heli- golf cart. they got helicopters for us. Okay, <laughs> okay that I can do. It's way better. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I almost I had I had thoughts of um, I think the only time in my life where I was really entertaining killing myself was out on the yeah. scalpel, <laughs> and 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 it wasn't like it was a weird. It was like this is too hard. Yeah. And yeah. something seems very appealing to me in this moment about just, just jumping over right. and, and then just gently and quietly yes. sinking to the bottom. <laughs> you just, you just want the work to end. Yeah. 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 So how did you, how did you, and how do you deal with that mentally? I, I don't, I, you know, I just kept going. Right. Mm-hmm. I just kept going because I didn't want to be the one to quit. Right. Mm-hmm. Now remember, I see, I was working with seasoned veterans and I was a new guy. Right now, because I've seen you were the, the other side of that. I've seen the guys who, who you know, in the middle of the trip, just say, "You know what? I ain't gonna do it." There's no, you know, you know what I mean. They just give up. And what do they do? Just go sit down. I mean, what, what the hell? Well, they just that go lay in their bunk the rest of the trip. You're not gonna get paid. You're not gonna get paid anything. Right. Well, you're there until the boat's there, and yeah. now it's gonna take longer because we're down one guy. Right. Yeah. And that's fine. We can handle it. You can't. That's okay. And we're not even going to torment the guy. I mean, we understand. Look, fishing isn't a job that Mm. you do and dislike. (laughs) If you, if, if you had stayed with scalloping, Mm. right. Yeah. It would have been because you really loved it. I mean, aside, aside from the hard work, aside from those feelings, when it came down to it, you said all of that, but what was more important, and this is how I look at it. Always looked at it. You know, this is great being out in the ocean and seeing the shit and being there and the salt spray and the, and the, maybe, you know, maybe the pain in that type of um, abuse was part of the allure for people who do it. I don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> but still, <laughs> for the masochist. after all that, right? Because again, I see that we stuck with it and I couldn't wait for next trip, you know? Hmm. Wow. We came in and, yeah, that's cool. I, you know, <clears throat> I still love fishing, and I fish out of um, Bohit Mc, Bohicket Marina. You ever been there? No. Near Kiowa, South Carolina. Oh, okay. No, no. And um, but you know, I I lo- when I got on that boat. Yeah. Right. Out of the do- it was like this beautiful November, early November <laughs> afternoon. Yeah. Right. And I'm uh-huh. writing in my, you know, in my journal as the sun's <laughs> going down, and I'm fa- I'm feeling like Hemingway over here. Right. Right, right, right. And the next entry in my journal was days and days later going, what the <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. have I done? Right? Because <laughs> we were laid up in a storm, yeah. <clears throat> which ultimately yeah. ended our trip because it was so yeah. bad. It was like close to the perfect storm. I was prepared to die. 
And we drifted <laughs> yeah. all the way down to Chincoteague Tank Island, Virginia. And, and yeah. as soon as that boat touched that dock, I said, see you <laughs> later. <laughs> That's I it. hitchhiked. I, I, I hitchhiked. Seen, no, I've seen guys do so that. I got they, a bad, they I got a bad taste dock, in my mouth. And they're not even interested in the check that they heard. That, that was me. They voted. They, that was they, me. They, they grabbed the chair. They, they, that's it. They fucking run. That's exactly. That's me. Right. I ran and I started and I hitchhiked <laughs> the next two days to get back to, to right. Cape May. Now, now again, <laughs> we might break your balls a little, right? But when sure. it came down to it, though, we don't blame people. Yeah. Because again, it's not. Easier, easier, easy, easy, easier. You're all in or you're yeah. all out. I there's love no, that. Yep, there's, right. there's no right. pot way when it comes to commercial fishing. I love that. So now, right. how about now? How about the, the tuna fishing that you're doing? Like, what's the hard? So let's just make it about being on the show, if we can. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Like what's, what's hard? What's, what's some of the hardest things mentally or psychologically about you know, fishing being watched like that? Well, look, the hardest thing, too, is, for instance, my little meltdowns. We, 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 we mentioned those, right? Yeah. Yes. Like every my year little, when they put my, the, kid, my the hardest thing for me, right? The hardest thing for me is every year when they put that down the boat. Now I'm not proud of that, mind you, right? And every year they bolt the cameras down and I tell myself I'm not gonna let it happen. <laughs> and the whole season we're filming, right? And you guys see me a little aggr getting yeah, yeah, aggravated, yeah. right? Yeah. Under my breath, to myself, I'm going, I'm not gonna let it happen. I'm not gonna let it happen. No, I'm not gonna let it happen, right? And because that's my goal is to make it one season. Uh, just about one, one breakdown. season. Not one tantrum. That's a without, that's without having a meltdown. But then you add in real life. Uh -huh. Right. Mm. Now again, now okay, it's the third day of the trip. And even though it may not be as demanding as like scalping like you experience, mentally it's still demanding. I still try to think. I mean, for three days I've been trying to catch one fucking fish. Right, right. All right. <laughs> Just one, so we get the hell out of there. I right. go home, yeah. and nothing's going my way. Yeah, and everything's going wrong, and now I'm exhausted mentally mm. and physically. Mm -hmm. Right, and yeah, we take a few. At least, like in that tuna game, we can lay down for an hour or two here and there. But the bottom line is, until we catch fish, I can never sleep. That's just mm. me. Wow. So I may be laying down, but I ain't really sleeping. Right, mm. I got one eye open, listening in case. They hear something they don't tell me, and they see something they don't tell me, right? And my, my crew is great, but that's just how I am. Yeah. I always have this thing, until we catch one, like I can't sleep until the job's done. Kind right, of. right. But <clears throat> So you add in real life, and you're exhausted, and I stub my toe, and real life happens. You know, and I stub my toe that one final time, and I lose it, right? Now, you can even see Angelica, too, my daughter. She, that upsets her. Yeah. Really, and I feel bad about that, right? She's, she's know, amazing I, with you. She she never seen that behavior at the house. Yeah. Right? Because I think you Daddy, actually mentioned that in a show. Daddy and Captain are two different people, <clears throat> right? And, like, that's one of the challenges. You know, because, again, like, I feel bad when I see it upset my daughter, but, like, the boys are used to it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Jay and Joe know better. They go, just leave him alone. Let the storm pass, right? And then <laughs> he's going to come back and say sorry. And it's, you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's never directed at, at them. Right. It's just directed at things. Right. Right. right? right. But it works. Even the boys. I bet the boys would stick up for me go, because we use it. Once he gets that out, and it's whether we're tuna fishing yeah. or, you know, the boys yeah. have been on the boats when after three days, We've been hauling nets around the clock, and the fish hole ain't full. And right, right. And you know, again, nobody's making money. If we don't come home with a boatload of fish, we can work five days. And if we don't fill the hold, there ain't nobody making a paycheck. Right. So the guys are all for whatever it takes to get the job done. Oh well, so, so that's uh, yeah. if the captain's gonna have his little freaking meltdown. <laughs> Good. <laughs> get right? it out. Right. Get it out. Cause get it gonna, out. Because then he's gonna click, and it's gonna yeah. happen. It's just gonna happen. Well, so you mentioned your crew, right? <clears throat> And um, Jason is your nephew, right? Nephew. Yeah. And you guys obviously have a phenomenal relationship. It's part of the reason I love watching you guys so much is just you have a cool deal going on there. Yeah. But, and and, 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 and the, the conversation has come up in many, many episodes that, you know, about the, usually in the context of like drama for the show, right? Yeah. You know, the people not getting along, <clears throat> mates right, and right. captains and mates and mates and <clears throat> all that stuff. But, but what I'm really interested in, and I've never heard it, I don't know that I've seen every episode, but I have never heard yeah. the conversation go to this level, which is I, I've been waiting to ask you this question. 
which is how important is the strength of the crew's relationship to actually landing fish? Oh, well, you know, that's crucial, right? We want any boat because, you know, when it comes down to it, right, you, you can have those moments where, you know, like when I have my meltdown, but if the rod bends over, everybody's going to be able to say, okay, that's over, back to work to mm -hmm. land that fish. Mm -hmm. If anybody held grudges or hard feelings or anything of the nature, it wouldn't work. You know what I mean? It just, it wouldn't work. You, you wouldn't be able to stay on the boat, on any boat, hmm. because you wouldn't be able to get the job done. Why not? Well, if you were sunken in the corner, well, we needed you on the back deck. Then you're not going to get invited out. If you out. didn't quit when you would get in, you'd get your walking papers. Right, 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 right. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. if we could have the heated moment, but in, in the fishing industry, and whether it's with Dr. Scallopin like you did or this, even in the heat of it, if the rod bends, it's yes, time to go so, to work. Right. So everything gets put on pause until after the job is done. And then if everybody wants, we can all pick up where we left off. <laughs> Good batter and or, or, yeah, but a lot of times if you land a fish, right, then it's like the fight was a what, what fight? Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. What were we? No, we're good. Everything's perfect. Yeah, it's yeah. all good. <laughs> we weren't fighting. <laughs> well, it wasn't a fight. It's not a fight. I'm in charge, right? <laughs> right I don't right. fight. This is what I say goes. So help see, me. That's, that's always a challenge for me is having my kids on the boat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Because, you know, I wrestle between, you know, I take that seriously as a captain. I'm responsible for everybody's life and everybody's paycheck twofold, yeah. right? Right. And I used to, I'll admit there's times when it gets hard when I have my son and the daughter on the boat. You know, that line gets blurry for me between captain and daddy. You know wow. what I mean? And, I'm not convinced it's always helpful to me as captain. Mm. Now, maybe in this, some instances, some instances, has it made me a better father? Maybe, I don't know. But I know there's some instances wow. where that's been a challenge. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's a decision as a captain that, you know, until years where my kids were on the boat full time, I didn't have to face. I would make my decisions based on, a whole bunch of other things. Yeah. <clears throat> well, how about it, it's been well. How many have you been? Nine seasons now. Yeah. Now we just wrapped up filming season nine. Yeah. Right. So and now, how many? Now, um, Jason's been on it the whole time, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but uh, Angelica, that's more very much more recent. Well, she she left. Look, when 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 Jay Jay fished with me right out of high school, right? Mm -hmm. Jay was always my nephew. We got pictures of Jay when he was in pull-ups when I took him to the local trout pond, right? Mm -hmm. And I was his Uncle David, and I, I took him fishing, right? So he's always been my nephew that we took fishing when we went for fun, you know, me and the wife or with the family. Yeah, Nancy, Jay, your wife Jay is big fishing, into fishing so also. So we took him. Yeah. Now, the, it just so happened that he graduated from high school and needed a job, and I just happened to need a guy. The guys who were fishing, the guy who was fishing, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I said, oh, even though normally I would like guys with more experience, Jay was my nephew. Yeah. So in my mind, I was like, okay, well, Jay's kind of a clean slate. He doesn't have to unlearn anything he learned from fishing with somebody else. Right? Oh, that's, oh, that's interesting. And it worked out. It worked out great. Jay became a great crewman. You know, his mom, um, it turns out, too, after a year or two on the boat, like, she finally confided in me, like, that was a great thing for Jay. Because it gave him direction. It gave him, oh, that's cool. you know, he finally was, you know, he was running around the house saying he was a fisherman, you know, and proud of it. Right on. Right? Because, too, like, you know, he was in that club back then with the with the jeans down to his ass crack and the fucking mm. hat on and the flat brim. And that don't fly on my boat. <laughs> <laughs> he got their jeans up and curl that goddamn hat. <laughs> I don't put up with that. This is why I love this guy, folks. Oh, God bless it. This is so great. <laughs> right? I mean, Curl right. the goddamn hat. Right, right, right. Curl the goddamn <laughs> brim. It's not always new. Right. Looks like you just stole it, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, God bless. So, so you rescued him. You gave him some look, direction. No, no, I'll, I'll say That's that, too. It's hard for me to imagine, to tell you the truth, like that he was going, like, you know, kind of like gang. 
in the direction. Well, that, yeah, no, no, it's just that's not. Look, yeah. look, he just didn't have a direction. I don't want to say right, he was right. going down that road, right? All right. But he, his father is a carpenter, a contract carpenter, and and very successful in that yeah. industry, right? Okay. And he'd work with his dad on and off, but he didn't have any desire to go full time with dad. He was looking for something different, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, well, I, the timing was, was like, perfect, you know, then, wasn't it? Look, he 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 helped me as much as I helped him. Sure. Right. Because well, he great. was dedicated. That kid, right? In in the in the, uh, it must have been ten years leading up to before the show happened, right? And again, fishing is fishing. There's weeks you don't make any money. We work a hundred hours, and if there's not enough fish to make a yeah. paycheck, you don't make a paycheck. Right, that's the yeah. fishing industry. Yep, and uh, no, that's why when people hear about the big score and the big paycheck and how these guys made ten grand in one week on pick pick whatever show you want to talk about, yeah. what they don't realize is that's the back pay for all the weeks that right. they put in a hundred hours and never got paid. Right, right, that's the story you don't hear on any of these shows. Right, right. So they don't it hear is about absolutely. The, they don't hear about the three weeks worth of prep work, <laughs> right? Which is getting the boat hauled out, mm -hmm. getting it ready, sanding, painting, grinding, fixing, right? That's three or four weeks of prep work that nobody gets any money for until there's fish in the hole. Nobody's yeah. paid anything. So it is is it clearly a labor of love. Right, right, who right. The, no, but hell? still, at the end of the year, it has to make sense. You can't work for a whole year and go. Well, well, I didn't make any money this year. You know, at the yeah, end. Yeah, but of the don't year, you think like if you love it enough? I mean, yeah. <clears throat> you're going to figure out the ways to make it make sense. Like you're going right, to figure right. if you love it, and you're going to figure out how to be year, good at you know, it. Anybody, we're, we're, you know, you have to go. Okay, I had an okay year financially. Because let's face it, money isn't the only thing that makes the world go round. But we all need to make. Some. How many years have you been doing this? I had Fishing my first job in a boat when I was eleven. Right, yeah, because it started out, there was a little local potty boat, right? That was right in the Salem Harbor and Salem Sound, right? Yeah, yeah. And I was a kid, you know, with my I'd mow the lawns and I'd do errand, you know, stuff around our chores for my dad, right? And every weekend, you know, all that money that I made, I would um go fish on a little boat because I, I was already into fishing, right? And it just went out in the harbor and caught our little local flounders, right? But every yeah. weekend, I was there, that's. That's I would mow the lawn all week so I could go fishing on the weekend, right? And buy some bait. That's just how it was, right? Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. one one weekend, you know, the the other kid who was probably not much older than me, maybe four or five years, didn't show up, right? And so the owner of the boat said, you know, he knew me for being a kid who was there every weekend, right? So he said, "Hey, kid, you want a job?" And you know what I mean. So that's how my career started. Yeah, and yeah. I never looked back from that time. I had one one wow. one sure job. I washed dishes for a week at a restaurant during that time. And when I found out at the end of the week that they deducted the money for the dishes I broke while I was washing dishes. <laughs> I'm not making I told any money. them what they could do with their freaking job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. So are are you still learning? Yes. What, learning fishing. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah, from oh, like, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what I meant. I mean, like you, you know, learning. So, well, well, whether we're talking yeah. fishing or life in general, right? When do you stop learning? Well, I think you could stop learning if you if you think you know it all. No. Right. If you if right. But, yeah, I, if see, you close yourself off, if you if you go, I am the expert now. I've learned no. it. <laughs> I think I think if I mean, what else? What else? There, what else is there to learn for you uh, in fishing? Well, there's always something new out there. There's always something to learn. Uh, you know, and, and again, back to Jay, like, okay, so Jay, for, you know, after all those years working with us, he had a girlfriend. She was from Alaska. Her mom was from Alaska. Mm. Her mom took a turn, got a little ill. So she, she wanted to go back to Alaska. Jay went back to Alaska for a few years. He was hemming and hollering about it. I said, Jay, you've been on, you, you worked for me a decade. You don't owe me nothing. I said, go to Alaska, right? Because you don't want to be my age. You know, he's in, he was at 22 or 3 at the time. I said, you don't want to be my age. You go, oh, I could have gone to Alaska and, um, you know, not done it and regretted that. 
Yeah. So many years later, right? Right. So I said, and if you ever come back to the West Coast, if I still own a boat, you still got a job, right? And that's what exactly what happened. So Jell stepped up to fill the void, right? Mm -hmm. And that was partially because at that point we had been established as the family boat. Mm -hmm. So we were like, who are we going to get to replace Jay? We couldn't just get another guy off the street. I know plenty of guys, yeah. right? Right. And look, I told it. I told my daughter. She now she's my daughter. You know, she uh, has been fishing with the family, but never for work. But I said, look, because of the deal we can get, we know with the TV money, it's a little extra, right? I said, look, we filmed for six weeks. Even if you hate it, shut the fuck up and get your ass <laughs> in the boat. <laughs> right? Because you don't have... I hope it's all right if I said that, right? But, oh, yeah, we're good. Right, right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We're I mean, very that's what I said. It's an opportunity for our family, right? I said, look, even if you hate it, shut up. Get it. You know, she no. was working at the airlines at the time. So no. in that six weeks, she had an opportunity to double her yearly income. You don't wow. walk away from opportunity like that when you're wow. their age. Wow. Yeah. Hey, you know, I, there, there's two other questions all right. that, that I wanted to ask you about that are a little bit off subject, but just still fun and curious. <clears throat> What is the deal with bananas? <laughs> bananas are bad luck. Do you know why? Does anyone yes. know why? You do? Yes, I know why. Tell me. Okay. Now, it started out in my youth when I was commercial fishing down in Key West, Florida in the 80s. A banana oh, I bet that was no fun. Down. This is serious. This I bet serious. that was no fun at all, right? Right. Fishing out of Key West? That must have just yeah, sucked. Oh, well, yeah. It was In your 20s. No, remember, back what? then, I, it was in the 80s. It's... Okay. I was here for five years, but it's kind of like a gray period in my life. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that on another show. Roger that. <laughs> okay. But um, so, so a commercial fishing boat got run down by a big, a thousand foot ship. And it happened to be a banana boat, a Chiquita bananas. Right. And all six fishermen were killed. Oh, wow. They were all perished. Wow, right. I never heard that. Wow. So it started out as a boycott Chiquita bananas deal. Again, when we're back in the eighties. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, since then I've learned, you know, it's true. Going back to the sailing days, you've heard of ghost ships, right? You yeah. Know, right. A lot of people feel, how did they become those, that term ghost ship? How did that phenomenon happen? Well, think about it. They put into these ports, and back then, they were at sea for years at a time. So they would load up on fruits and stuff for their long voyages at sea. Now, if a bunch of bananas had, had a bunch of spiders get into bananas, how do you think everybody died? Hmm. Starvation. Right? So they think it could have been the spiders, right? And that's how that whole ghost ship <laughs> phenomenon happened. Right? How interesting. Or, as well, now on top of that is... Even let's go back in those days. Remember, back in those days, they were they were at sea sometimes for a year at a time or more, several years. So they would load up with fruits in in uh, like you know limes, oranges, you know, to keep from getting diseases like scurvy, lack right. of vitamin C. Right. Now we all know how fast bananas go bad. Yeah. So if in the hold in that confined space, if you had all your other fruit and bananas in there too, the bananas would go bad first. And the gases would cause all the other fruit to go bad. So now you're at sea for years with no fresh fruit. So bananas so just got bad. Back, back in the sailing days, bananas were just taboo for many reasons. Gotcha. Now, so now but it's now super, it's just now, now it's, it's just a, superstition. Of course, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Now it's like yeah, you know, like now, so somebody comes up. So somebody we'll talk about your charters in a second. But so somebody, you know, a lot of people don't know that. I learned the hard way. I worked on boats. I didn't know that shit as a kid. I learned the hard way. I was I was chartered a boat, and the captain said, "Get that right the fuck off here." What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about right now? He goes, "What's the matter yeah, yeah, with you?" Yeah, yeah. It's like it was almost as if I just insulted his family or something. <laughs> you know? Oh yeah, it's funny. The other day I did. I had a, a trip. I did. It was combat vets on the boat, right? Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, I saw your last post. That was cool. Right, right, your last post, right? It's all combat vets, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, these are hardcore guys. These guys are all injured, purple yeah. hot guys, right? Yeah. Wounded in combat, right? Mm hmm So I hear, you know, and Will, the crew, told me at the end of the day what happened. So they're all back there. I'm up driving the boat doing my thing, but somebody brought a banana and we had lunch. <laughs> and then, like, you know, four of them knew the score oh, with yeah. bananas. Yeah, yeah. 
It was just funny. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. It was like, oh, they all threw it over, and nobody wanted me to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> and the trip was over. You got these hardcore guys, right, who, who do yeah. a job that yeah. I could never do. Right. And they're worried right. about Captain Dave seeing uh, a banana. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so great. Now, the other it's a little story, right? It's, as per, it's perfect. <laughs> so now talk to us about, um, and this maybe is the most important question of the day, Wilson. 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 <laughs> yeah. Talk to me it's about Wilson. Mascot. Yeah, how'd that start? Well, look, that all started back in the day, before Jay, right? Look, I did some, and it was done because economics, right? If 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 we were tuna fishing, and a lot of times what would happen too is we'd have a big week, and then you pay guys, and then you, you know the guys disappear for a few days, but then you know, yeah, right, right, right. It's the worst thing you could do is pay somebody sometime, uh, right. especially if you give them a big paycheck. Yeah. And again, I'm not being judgmental. I was there in my own, you mentioned the keys, right? Right. All right? So I'm not casting yeah. any stones here. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah. But so all of a sudden you're forced to go alone or the boat stays up tied to the dock. And so I got pretty good at going alone for oh. these tuna anyway, right? Yeah. And uh, guys would see me out there for sometimes two or three days and they knew I was on the boat alone. So... It was funny. One time, one of them, as a joke, they go, who do you talk to, right? And so as a joke, I think one of them found that ball. That That's, it's actually SpongeBob, right? It's yes. a SpongeBob ball. Right. <clears throat> but Remember it's all the rage at one time away. and all the fall fairs, right? Yeah. Remember all the fall, the, yeah. the, the autumn fairs in the little games you play, right? Right. Those SpongeBob balls were everywhere. Okay. So the guys <laughs> took it, put it on a string and hunted on the boat. Right? It just is a gag. You go, yeah, now you got somebody to talk to. Uh, Plus, I ran with it. I put him on the string. I gave him glasses. Yeah, I know. It's I great. I gave him arms. Yeah, that you was know, great. I found one of those. There was an old cell phone holder for the car that was these little <laughs> plastic arms, right, that wrapped around your phone. Yeah. I ripped him right off the cell phone holder and freaking put him uh, on Wilson. That's great. <laughs> and, of course, you named him Wilson uh, because of the movie Castle. Well, yeah, because it was round about the time of the Tom Hanks movie. Tom Hanks, yeah, yeah that's great. <laughs> that's, that's so great. This has been fun, man. I really appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you and the joy Thank that you. you bring to me through the show. And I, I really you. love the fact that you made time um, for this today. And awesome, to, yeah. To bring some, some levity and some me. cool I information to our audience. How? So a couple of things. You were doing charters now, okay? So yeah. how, how do people... Um, if they want well, to, they want to hire right, you to they, take them they out. Can look, go on our website, fvhidemerchandise.com, and they oh. can go on our charter page and um, you know see about chartering with myself on the Falcon or Jay and Joe and the Hard Merchandise. So just so they know, uh, it's it, FV, which of course is short for fishing vessel. Yeah. So it's FV as in vessel, hard right? Hardmerchandise dot com. Yeah. They can learn about the charters. And uh, and definitely, and it's C-A-P-T Marciano for Instagram, right? Right, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We have you, all. It's all the same handle? Right. C-A-P-T Marciano? Captain Marciano, right. Perfect. And then if you want some real fun, though, on Facebook, like with this also, I have my Captain Marciano, my public figure page. But if you follow my personal page, you know, I always meant to, like I was expecting to, okay, this is going to be my – personal Facebook, and then I'll have my um, professional page. Yeah. Well, it all just kind of lines got blurred. So now on my all my Captain Marciano stuff, I keep things by the book. That's my public page. Okay. Oh, well, that doesn't sound like fun at all. I know. Well, but if you want to see the post that I won't play it okay. on my public page. That's very Make important. Make sure you follow my personal page, Dave Marciano. Noted. <laughs> Noted. That's the one where I always get the calls from the network to get my <laughs> I get severe finger waggings quite often. <laughs> That's what we love about you, man. All right, brother. Appreciate you, dude. All right, thank you. All right, hey, anytime if you ever want to do it again, at least now we gotta dial now down. Now we figured out how to yeah, it should be only about hundred percent easier. Right on. Right, 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 right to right. stick with it. All right, man. All right, thank Thanks, you, brother. Peace. I can't believe that I forgot to address why I have a little statue of a captain over there. I mean, of course, it's pretty obvious. But this was this is one of my favorite possessions uh, ever because I grew up with this. This was my dad's. My dad was a big fisherman. I can't believe I forgot to mention all that. But anyway, uh, I knew it was going to be that much fun. 
Actually, I didn't. I knew, no, I actually, I, that's a lie. I knew it would be fun, but I didn't know it was going to be that fun. Nah, I kind of did. Yeah, he's a good dude. That's the first time I've ever spoken to him live. And uh, what a blast. It's totally interesting, isn't it? That whole career. I could have gone that direction. Oh, very close. If it wasn't for that, how do you say it? Scalloping. I, I, I tried to do his accent. I can't do it. I can't pull it off. I can't pull off the Gloucester Fisherman accent. All right, folks, I hope you uh, enjoyed that. Thanks for tuning in uh, again, and see you for the next episode of Tough, Tough Talks. And until then, create miracles. <laughs>